Hi everyone, my name is Melanie Grant and this is CNM Glass. Today we're focusing on our class 1015 for our first week of CPT coding. So week one of two. Our focus today is looking at what is a CPT code and how we identify a visitor procedure, where we abstract that from, for professional-based services, what professional-based services means, although you should have a good reminder, and how to read the CPT codes and what we mean by standalone and indented codes. Let's get started. The first thing to talk about is that a CPT code stands for Current Procedural Terminology. And this is all talking about the professional or the provider-based service. You'll remember that there's two types of coding. One is professional and one is facility when we talk about procedures. Your professional is your provider or other care service for their time, knowledge, expertise, and abilities. Whereas your facility is more like an overhead and is only for the inpatient hospital, for the hospital itself. Keep in mind, when we say, when we say inpatient hospital itself, facility-based coding is only on the facility side, but there will be a charge on the professional side for all inpatient services. So be careful not to get confused as some books and other individuals may do by saying one is outpatient, one is inpatient, because that's not the case. Professional-based services will be both inpatient and outpatient, whereas facility-based services are inpatient, hospital-based services only. Right now, we're looking at the first of those two for professional-based services with CPT coding. You'll notice that when we abstract, what we're looking at is we're looking to determine was a procedure or service done or was an office visit done. And you'll look at the organization of your CPT code book, which if you picked up the optional book, this, this module looks like this. We have our CPT professional edition from the AMA for 2019. If you have a different edition that you would like to review for this class, that's perfectly fine. But keep in mind, some page numbers or code, no code descriptions may change. In your CPT book, it's organized first with the E&M always listed first. There's our, there are some editions where it will be at the end, but it's very rare. E&Ms are your office visits or evaluation and management services. And we go into that in much more detail in our 2030 class when we talk about CPT coding specifically. These range from code numbers 99201 through 99499. You'll notice CPT codes, as you remember, are five digits and always numeric, unless they're a temporary code or a different category type. For most of the codes and all that we're talking about today, we're only looking at numeric codes. Anesthesia services are going to be in your zeros, and they go from 00100 through 01999. And some add-on codes, in the medicine section can be found for anesthesia, which are 99100 through 99140. Note that that's, that has a little indicator because it's also part of the medicine section. Your surgical section, which is the largest part of your CPT, ranges from 10021 all the way up to 69990. And just to have an idea of how much that is, because they've put that in your, your textbook as only one section, but it's actually split up based off of the different body areas within, the, within your body. And so you go completely from head to toe. There's the auditory. And just to have an idea of how big that is compared to the entire book, it's the entire section I'm holding up here. And it's the majority of the book. And if you'll notice, this entire back section is your alphabetical and your indexes. So, there we go. Out of the entire coding section of this book, surgery is found to be in this larger chunk here. And in my copy of the book, it's all coordinated in color on the side, which I love. After that, you have services for radiology or x-rays, 
and imaging. This is the professional side, but can also include some of the uh, collection base for outpatient services. Uh, although inpatient does bill for their own collection of an x-ray. There's pathology and laboratory, same thing as with x-rays. Any outside outpatient laboratory or pathologist office bills with these series of codes. And then you have your medicine section, which is kind of a hodgepodge of all the different types of medicine services that can be provided to a patient. Make sure you read through your introduction to CPT coding in this week's challenge in order to understand some of those differences in sections. The next part we want to talk about to you today is the way to read a CPT code. Now, as we've already mentioned, your CPT codes are listed 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I have here a couple of examples. You'll notice the code 13121. I'm going to list the, the description here in just a moment. And 13122, which has a symbol. In fact, CPT coding has a lot of symbols, and you have just a little bit of information on those symbols here in your uh, section 23, I'm sorry, 21.4. So you'll be talking about those next week. For this week, I just want you to identify what is a CPT code and how do I read it. So I've given you an example which is found on page 583 of your textbook this week. Oh, I'm sorry, 587 of your textbook. We have a here a repair complex scalp, arms and or legs, 1.1 to 2.5 centimeters. And we can read that here. The way that CPT reads, though, is we have what's called indented and standalone codes. A standalone code starts with a capital letter and is not indented and has a full description, including oftentimes information after what's called the semicolon, which is one of the symbols you'll need to be aware of. After that, additional, thing, additional information may be found in the code below that. So here we have a 2.6 centimeter to 7.5 centimeter. And if you looked up code 13121 in your CPT code book, that's all you would see is the description of 2.6 centimeters to 7.5 centimeters. Likewise, if I came in to code 13122, I would see the description each additional five centimeters or less list separately. And there's a little more information there. We'll just stop there. The way I wanted to point this out to you is because CPT coding is all about how you read the code. And in your section reading this week, we do talk about this under the code descriptions in page 582. I chose this particular example because it was a lot shorter for me to write on the board. So if I look at this example though, my standalone code repair starts off to the left. You'll notice that the other codes below this are indented. And you'll notice that repair starts with the capital letter, whereas other codes are either numeric or have a lowercase letter to start them off. This identifies the difference between a standalone code that can be billed with its full description versus an indented code. So if I'm reading this, I'm going to read for 13121, I have to look at that standalone code that's above it to determine what is the full description before the semicolon. And so I would read 13121 is repair complex in the scalp, arms, and or legs and then I would stop and continue on the code that I'm looking at. So that semicolon means everything before this applies to all codes below me that are indented and should be stopped at this point. So for 13120, I read repair complex scalp, arms, and or legs 1.1 centimeters to 2.5. For 13121, Repair complex scalp, arms, and or legs, 2.6 centimeters to 7.5. For 13122, I would read, repair complex scalp, arms, and or legs, each additional 5 centimeters or less, listed separately. What this means is the way that it, CPT is organized, you must always find your, your standalone code and read through until you see that semicolon for any time you have an indented code. 
You have a few examples on page 582 of your textbook reading this week. For code 49203, excision or destruction, open intra-abdominal tumors, cyst or endometriomas, one or more peritoneal, mesentric or retroperitoneal, primary or secondary tumor. Whew, there's the semicolon. Largest tumor, five centimeters diameter or less. Code 49204 would read with the previous standalone code, which was 49203, all the way through the semicolon, and then the description on 49204. So in your book, if you follow along with me, excision or destruction, open intra-abdominal tumors, cyst or endometriomas, one or more peritoneal mesentric or retroperitoneal, primary or secondary tumors, largest tumor, 5.1 to 10 centimeter diameter. Whew, that's a lot to read. And then 49205, which is also indented, and the only standalone code above it being 49203. So we would go back to that same description of 49203 and read for 49205 as excision or destruction, open intra-abdominal tumors, cyst or endometriomas, one or more peritoneal, mesentric or retroperitoneal primary or secondary tumors, Largest tumor greater than 10.0 centimeters in diameter. So there's a lot of description there. That semicolon is telling us where to stop at and where to continue. And so the rest of the examples in this part of your reading this week are all telling you about this. It's up to you to make sure that you're in the right section and that you read any guidelines per related to the code that you're on for that particular selection. CPT coding is very unique in this because it doesn't build a code, it just gives them all to you and it has you build the description instead. That's all we have for today, but make sure you send me any of your questions or issues. Uh, you can email me or you can come down into Coding Clinic this week, which will be on Tuesday, for all of your concerns and anything you would like to go over in Coding with Miss Melanie. Until next time, we'll talk to you later.